Hey, what's up, Michigan? Welcome to the final State Champs Michigan Hang Time podcast of the season. I can't believe it. But of course, we'll have our State Champs at the State Finals show for you after the State Championships that take place this weekend at the Breslin Center. So stay tuned for that. Uh, This is our weekly Chalk Talk sponsored by the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan. Showing some love to Division Four this week. A great story out of the Blue Water area where the Marine City Cardinal, Mooney Cardinals, are Breslin bound for just the second time in program history. First time since 2010. Coach Mike McAndrews, really great that you could join us here on Hang Time. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on. And it's now, if I'm right, it's your birthday or was your birthday? Yesterday was on the quarterfinal. Uh, can you believe so yeah, that? quite the birthday present from uh, from my players to uh, cap off the day, a, a wonderful day uh, with a victory and heading to Breslin. No doubt about it. You beat Taylor Trill- Trillium in the quarterfinals, 59-56. And it, if, you know, as I was uh, looking at some of the highlights and, and some of reading about it, really the second quarter, I think, for you guys, that really set the tone. I mean, if you're going to succeed in the tournament, you know this, it has to start with defense. Without question, you know, we got off to a slow start. They got off to a really quick start, and we were down 8 nothing. And then uh, at one point in the first quarter, with about a minute left, we were down 17-5. to We went on a little 5-0 run to end the quarter and carried that momentum into the second quarter. Made some good defensive adjustments. Um, went a box and one on their best player, uh, who was an All-State player, right. um, and kind of flustered them a little bit. And our defense really led us in, the, in that game and got us back in the game and carried us through the next three quarters. And, you know, we talk about this a lot, but in the end, to the very end, you've got to hit your free throws. Without question. And we were we were great down the stretch, you know, when they were trying to foul. Um, I think overall we were uh, 12 or 13 out of 14 from the line. Uh, if you defend, rebound, and hit free throws, you're going to give yourself a chance every night, especially in March. Absolutely. Trent Rice with 32 points uh, in the victory. Talk about his performance, what he means to your team. Yeah, I mean, he was he was outstanding. He was the best player on the court last night, and he is most nights for us. You know, people that don't know our program um, or don't follow us, you know, being from a smaller school, if they didn't think Trent Rice was an All-State player before uh, this last week, they certainly do now. Uh, he's been a four-year varsity player for us, scored over 1,000 points. He's probably the best pure athlete I've ever had um, in my program in 25 years, a Division wow. One baseball commit. Um, but a really good basketball player. If he wasn't playing baseball in college, he'd be playing basketball. Right, and that's the great thing, too, about small schools is so many of the kids are multi-sport athletes, and that just makes them not just better athletes but better human beings, you know, yeah. overall, because you're not maybe the star in one of your other sports that you might be in one, like, you know, in this case, Certainly. he's a star. He's a star of both. Yeah, yeah. Who, who else would you like to credit for, you know, some of the really go-to players on your team that, that have helped you get as, as to where you are? Yeah, well, we hit kind of a, a rough patch. Beginning of the season, our very first game, um, first quarter, Brian Everhart, a junior, all-Catholic player for us as a sophomore, uh, had a really bad knee injury. It was very, very close to being catastrophic knee injury where the doctor said if he had torn all three ligaments, he'd have probably never played basketball again. Wow. He fortunately partially tore all three major ligaments, so he was able to avoid surgery and have physical therapy. So we hit some tough patches there without him and during the regular season, which is probably why you see 11 losses on our on our schedule, and it looks right. a little deceiving. That and our strength of schedule, I will say. Um, but he came back about two weeks before the state tournament started. He started to get his legs back a little bit, open the floor up for us. Uh, he's been playing at a really high clip. Right on. Uh, and you just uh, mentioned this, and uh, I think a lot of times, especially when we're in the tournament, a team will relish the role of the underdog if that's what uh, – the media or whomever wants to to lay on them because a 16 and an 11 record probably doesn't tell the story of the road you took to get here, meaning that you shouldn't be. Yeah, and you know, it, we kind of talk about that, but we talk more about who we've played and, the, and our strength of schedule. We have a senior yeah. leading team, um, and had we been healthy all year, that ref- record probably wouldn't have been you know 11 and 11 heading into the state tournament. But we've played the likes of Detroit Loyola twice. We've played uh, Lutheran North. We had De La Salle come to our place this year. Um, we only had one D4 team on our schedule all year. So we knew that that would hopefully pay dividends for us come March. Um, certainly, we would have liked to compete a little better during the regular season and won some of those close games. Um, but as we hit our stride, as you know, Lauren, it's all about playing your best basketball at the right time of year in March. No doubt about it. And it's for our basketball historians. 
You know, and a lot of them who followed Southfield Christian in their history would know that they did a very similar thing where they would just load up their schedule playing Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three teams, and then they were ready when the D4 tournament came around and their uh, string of state championships showed that. Yeah, now, certainly. I'd like you to talk a little bit about your family connection to hmm. Michigan high school basketball. I mean, you've got officiating, you've got coaching. I mean, they do it all. Yeah, so um... – you know, I've been at Cardinal Mooney for 25 years. I'm an alumni of the school. I played in this program. Uh, actually, I played for my older brother, Jim McAndrews, um, who was an assistant on my staff in 2010 when we got to the state championship game. Um, my sister, who, you know, Mick McCabe likes to call the best coach in the family, um, <laughs> was a Hall of Fame girls coach for 25 years and yes. got to four Final Fours in a state championship game. Um, and now my brother has... Um, you know, gone to the dark side and <laughs> right. uh, started officiate started officiating. So we don't talk. He was at the Breslin team. last week, right? He was. He had a Final yeah. Four. He had a girls. He's a very very good official, um, and he officiated a Breslin game uh, for the f- girls Final Four last week. So Cardinal basketball has been in our family and in our blood since you know late seventies, early eighties. My brother played here. I was the ball boy in second grade when my older brother was playing here. So uh, kind of been here forever. It's in my blood. Um, it's where I know I belong, and I, I love the student athletes we get, and the type of kids we get, and the opportunities we provide them. You started as a young coach. You were had the opportunity to take over the program when you were barely out of college. Uh, yeah, you right. So, why have you stayed? What's kept you there? Um, it's a good question. Um, first of all, it's my love affair for the place. The impact that this program and this school had on me as a youngster is something that I feel. Uh, a loyalty to, to want to do that for the next generation, hopefully have an impact on their lives, help them to, to become better husbands and better, um, you know, sons and fathers, hopefully down the line. Um, but more importantly, um, I, I, it's, it's just the family atmosphere that we get here. You know, I've had other bigger job opportunities. Um, I've never really entertained it, Lauren. Um, I believe you're called to do a certain thing at a certain place. Jim Benoit, who was the AD and assistant principal here in 1990. Uh, eight took a chance on a 22 year old kid because he thought I'd have passion. He thought I cared about the place and he thought I'd stay. Um, And I'm forever and forever grateful for him for taking, taking that chance on me 25 years ago. Hey, you know what? Your heart's in the right place. And you could talk about the bonds maybe that you've built with players over the years because they move on yet. You still maintain a connection with a lot of them, don't you? Yeah. And we talk about it in our program all the time. Like our program is built on the shoulders of these guys that came before us. Um, You know, we've got guys that are doctors and lawyers and uh, politicians and guys that are college basketball coaches now. I got a kid that played on that 2010 team, Tommy Tordecki, who's the top assistant at Saginaw Valley, outstanding college basketball coach, outstanding recruiter. Um, And just to see them grow in their various roles and fields, um, it's something that is far more than any win or loss we will ever experience. Absolutely. So... Um, this is an existential question, but what does being a coach then mean to you still to this day? Uh, to me, it's servant leadership. You know, um, I think if you can connect with young men, if you can get through to them, if you can make an impact on their lives, winning and basketball is secondary and will come naturally to that. If, um, if they trust you um, and you can gain their trust and build their trust, Um, I think you can have a positive impact on their lives. And I've said this to numerous people over the last 25 years. I've had student athletes that have have had far more of an impact on my life, Lauren, than I could have ever hoped to have on theirs. Um, And and this is an old saying, too, that that we kind of live by. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm. There you go. That's a bumper sticker right there. Yeah. Uh, For for sure. All right. Well, at 5.30 p.m. Thursday night, you've got Munising. Uh, This show should air before that contest, so those can – hear your thoughts on it before that but what have you been able to gather about these mustangs you're facing from what i can see they're another team that likes to focus on defense and rebounding yes yeah, certainly they're the you know we've seen some film on them last night and again today uh they look a lot like us um yeah. in, in all honesty they're very fundamentally sound they dig in on the defensive end of the floor they rebound the ball um they're not going to turn the ball over at an alarming rate so you're going to have to play really good defense and i think you know the team that can that can that can dictate who's going to control the glass. And I think also the nerves of the Breslin Center, who can settle in early. 
Um, you know, I remember that from our experience in 2010. Who can settle in the earliest? I think we'll have a really good good shot of dictating how the game goes. Yeah, you really can't prepare for what it's like to be on the court, the depth perception, all of that. Uh, it's just a completely different environment, but it's the same for both schools. So uh, sure. it, re it really is going to be, uh, you know, the fundamentals are going to get it done. You've been a member of BCAM, the Basketball Coaches Association, uh, for a long time. Your thoughts on the association and, and, uh, and where it's headed? I think it's the best coaches association in the state, possibly in the country. Uh, Dan Young. And those guys do a phenomenal job from coaching clinics to mentoring programs to reaching higher, what they do for our student, not just our coaches, but for our student athletes uh, and our basketball players in this state. I think um, they continue to push the envelope on exposure for both coaches, athletes, um, their push to, to kind of change the state tournament, um, you know, yes. and going to seating and then hopefully seating the regions as we move forward. Um, they've been a pioneer in that aspect and in, in, in changing how that happens. And I think most coaches will tell you they're behind that concept. Um, so the leadership from the top, from Dan Young on down, is it, it's just an organization I'm extremely proud and grateful to be a part of for so long. Fantastic. And we invite our audience to visit bcam.org. You can uh, check out information on the Mr. and Mr. Miss Basketball that was just recently named. Uh, the camp's reaching higher, more of that all at BCAM. Org. He's a Detroit Catholic League Hall of Famer, class of 2016. Coach Mike McAndrews, good luck. We will be watching.